<clears throat> people deluded i'm back again thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time good evening to those of you in the uk and welcome back each and every time as i just said on the topic of good evening good morning good afternoon good evening and of course good night depending on whoever you are wherever you are and how you're watching this people and when you're actually watching this now you know, it seems like, you know, the international break's been here forever. But in this week, we know the remaining international games are going to be played and we're back to league. And 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 if you are in Cups, which we are in Europa League Cup competition, and there's been a lot to speak about. Now, Granite Jack has been in the papers, you know, two different reports, really and truly. The first saying that he's Arsenal's, you know, ha depending on what you look at, I see that as most valuable player of 2021, depending on how you look at it. And uh, he's been linked with a move, leaving Arsenal and going back to her for Berlin um, and being linked with a couple of Bundesliga clubs but um, Sky Sky Sports Germany have predominantly said her for Berlin where as you lot know he looked like he was going to be going there um, last season obviously Arteta pulled him back in and I think with Xhaka, or when you mentioned that man's name, depending on who you ever you are and wherever you are, some of you probably started smiling at the screen because, you know, you're part of that weird little Xhaka, you know, Xhaka stand, stain, whatever they call it. And obviously we, we have what I call Xhaka, I call them Xhaka sexuals. Um, I should copyright that. Um, and then you've obviously got them people who, you know, as, as far as they're convinced, Xhaka isn't their cup of tea. Nothing he can do is right. Everything is all his problem. He's to blame for all the issues in the world. There's no balance. There's a couple of players. And I feel the club really is to blame because you're bringing in these players with a bit of muddied waters. As you lot know, my personal opinion on Xhaka, he should be doing the El Nene role sort of thing, playing in that sort of scope or that sort of role. I think like how, you know, I don't think we use Giroud sensibly in the sense of, you know, he's not a 20 league goal striker. Chelsea are not relying on him for that. So he's getting to show his quality. Xhaka is a squad player and there's no smoke without fire. There's been a couple of managers now. The one consistency has been they've all used him. There's got to be a reason ultimately you could say that's all been their demise and I, I think it's one of those I don't think he's a bad player um, I think he's actually quite decent and I like his mentality and I like his determination and you see a lot of the positive things I believe he does especially when you're at the Emirates that being said you know he's been here for three four years now and we're still debating stuff so for me at times if you're polarizing opinion I think that tells you where you're at as a footballer obviously I don't believe you know, I definitely see, you listen, I do think we're in dangerous territory and I can see why Arteta uses him. I do think long term, if what you demand from your midfield, we know what Xhaka tries to do, you know, dictate play and stuff. If you're demanding that of Xhaka, then we're going to, no, no criticism of his. I'm looking at the management now because he's clearly not the midfielder that can take this team forward and do things to help us in his own way to be the next level. He's worked well with Partey. Is he the long term partner for Partey? I'm not too sure. And the man's got two years left on his deal. He's playing all the time. He's an ever fixture ever present fixture in the squad you've got to sort out his future I'm inclined to believe Arteta wants him he's not tried to sell him he's played him all the time you know he said he wanted him at Man City or someone wanted him at City and those things there um so it is what it is you know for me personally I've said it once and I'll say it again I won't get into it I don't think he's a bad player but I just don't see you know if he had all the problems that we know Xhaka comes with but he was a match winner he's a match decider he could consistently split defenses he could consistently control the midfield whether that's clamping and winning the ball back or distributing the play and dictating how the game goes personally I wouldn't mind that you take the rough with the smooth it's not the same but look how Thomas Tuchel uses Jorginho he knows defensively and many other aspects Jorginho is going to struggle but then one two three things he wants from Jorginho he you know Jorginho's giving it to you on a serious level and that's what he wants so I don't even think we're in a, that territory I think Xhaka should start to play a marginalised role as I said he should be doing the El Nene I think he's a calm rotation squad player week in week out sort of personnel I don't believe that I do admire him because I haven't had to regardless of what you say about him I don't think I've had to question his commitment to Arsenal Football Club um, but it is what it is do I agree with him being the most in whatever that, whatever metric they looked at it do I agree with them saying of course he's been our, you know he's the most important player or whatever in 2021 of course not you know that's I think that's disrespectful to Kiritini you know Saka you know I'd say even Gabriel in his own way Partey that Xhaka hasn't been bad you know he has made mistakes but I do think he's been all right but ultimately that's always what he gives you there's several players even you know there's there's several Lacazette of recent it is what it is people but let's go with the first thing that I saw now um it's a report that came out of the CIES Football Laboratory, which are these guys. Allow me to share the screen, people. Now, I, they've got a lot of good little 
articles and all those sort of things, you know, look, the impact of the COVID market, pandemic and def- demographic of players, you know, um, they've got good little, little studies and I look at it because it provides, it provides a lot of information and it allows me to quantify things. A lot of things I've thought or haven't thought of have been shown here, but I can't actually find the article that is of significance, people, really, really and truly, which is why I'm happy, um, well, yeah, big up them. They, they said Saka was important one week. But yeah, while I can't find the article specifically on the website at this smash and grab attempt at making this video, you know, shout out to Chris. Chris, you know, hopefully we can get a video soon, my dude. Big up the man there. Big up all them guys there at Football London. As you lot can see, Xhaka's true worth to Arsenal revealed as astonishing performance value emerges. Now, obviously, he's been an ever-present, as they've said there, mainstay in the team. So naturally, you're going to probably lean towards that. You're playing all the time. You probably, whatever fans say you are of importance to the club internally you know Arteta rates you I think the players rate you I do think he's got character I don't think he's as bad as people make out but fundamentally I don't believe Xhaka should be a main starting a midfielder that, that is trying to get top four I'm open to being proved wrong like I said he's had some good periods at this football club and this season but generally when you fine tune the season it's the same old same old with a lot of players you know Good bits of form, bad bits of form, you know, decent players got a couple mistakes in them. And I'm not saying it's all Xhaka, but when you factor in, you know, let's just throw some random names. Xhaka might make six, seven mistakes a season. Bellerin might do the same. David Luiz might, uh, uh, the same might occur, you know. Um, Many players are, are good. Leno, even as much as I like him, is good for a couple of mistakes. When you add all of these up, the, how much points did these did these cost you? So we're at where we're at. On one hand, you, you know, I don't think he's as bad as man make out. I don't think he's quite as good as people make out. Um, it is what it is. He'll always get my support like every Arsenal player as long as they're representing the club. Apparently, though, the Swiss midfielder was named as Arsenal's best player of 2021 so far, according to the CIES Football Observ- Observ- Observatory. Again, almost struggled. And what I would say, you lot are very smart with the articles and the formal English. And I'm talking about these guys, of course, um, the formal English and the f- fancy logos and stuff. But I mean... Sh- I don't know. People might have to get their heads checked out and their eyes tested if this is a, who comes up as Arsenal's best player so far in 2021. Fair play, though. But, you know, apparently other top performing outfield players in the Premier League, according to such. Jorginho of late scored quite high. Harry Kane scored quite high. And, you know, Thiago on ability is a baller based on this season. Should he be up there again? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I have to question the legitimacy of this, really. Um, so, yeah, that's all it is, is in relation to Xhaka. But, again, I would like to know what this means how is this quantified it can't be in terms of value and things of significance like like such people apologies for the phone ringing but it is what it is no disrespect to Xhaka because he ain't doing this um moving away from that and as you lot can see I clicked on this people but it took me to you know a landing page of Sky Germany and it didn't load the, the video but reports claim Granite Xhaka is now looking to leave like I said within the next two years or now to a year from now you need to decide what you're doing with Xhaka and when you consider Xhaka's contract it's forcing it a bit the 2023s but there are two years left you know 2022 is a, is one thing you um and another thing is our midfield there's speculation over every midfielder at our football club whether they're on loan contracts whatever apart from Thomas Partey because we just signed him and we could add him into uncertainty if we was to harp on about injuries so a decision has to be made and if I'm Xhaka I'll be quite anxious because again the world has turned their back at a time against Granite Xhaka Arsenal football club and the manager hasn't you know Xhaka has played under several managers at this football club he's made he must be on 200 or so appearances for this club he's an ever present in the in the fixture you know he's of I don't believe it but in Arteta's eyes I have to say you're one of the most important players in the team you're up there historically with Abramian with Leno with Tierney with Saka with Gabriel with David Luiz and you know, these sort of things. So if I was him, if I'm playing a lot, I hear a lot of talk about Luis signing a new deal. Uh, Saka signed a new deal. Bam, man, there's talk on Laka, will he, won't he? Where's my thing? You know, if you believe him, man, at my age now, what is he, 28 or something along them lines? You know, you need to decide what I'm doing with my future. And he might say, Do you know what? I've enjoyed playing in the Premier League. Germany was where I got the most respect on my name. Uh, come allow me, man. Apologies, people. Germany is where I got the most respect on my name. It's where I built the most clout. It's where I'm most comfortable. Let me go back there sort of thing. Um, that could be, you know, settle down, you know, play a significant part. And to be fair, let's talk about finances. If we're all in Xhaka's position and you're playing since you signed for this club, you're playing week in, week out. There's been a massive turnaround. You've been one consistency in the in the team. 
I can't lie, I'm going to want some more peas. Like, it's as simple as that, you know. And I'm sure all of you lot that are looking at this on a non-biased thing can see where it's going. But according to Sky Germany, Granit Xhaka fancies a return to the Bundesliga in the near future. And Xhaka kind of indirectly on the eve of the Europa League talked about his fixture. Apparently, Xhaka is looking to move back to Germany despite his contract with Arsenal still having more than two years to run. Maybe it's in, maybe Xhaka, you know, he's been here for four or so years. He might say, you know what, it's time to go elsewhere. Maybe Arteta said, maybe Arteta is just using a lot of these players through design and come the summer, so, certain guys that we thought were his guys, hopefully are, are disbanded and things. You know, maybe he's been allowed to leave. Maybe he's told Xhaka, give me another year because you don't remember over a year ago he was to leave. Um, maybe he legitly wants to go. Maybe this is nonsense. We'll never know. Um, again, personally, you know, I think there's... It, listen, if we're going to keep Xhaka, if you're going to sell him, Gwendozi keep selling the rest of them, make a decision and make it quick because what we can't do is go into the into May, into the summer window and sit on our hands because there's too much uncertainty. I don't think we're going to make the right decisions necessarily. Everyone's going to unanimously agree. Like, I don't agree with it, but we might sell Xhaka or Gwendozi or Torreira and it could be the wrong decision. We might keep them and it could be the wrong decision. My point, same for Eddie and them young Gs. My point in, in years to come, my point is this club needs to make decisions and stand on them really and truly because too many got a uh, you know too many games three four games can change your whole future at Arsenal. El Nene, the script flipped, you know. Maitland Niles, he was leaving, then he got the community shield, then he's out, then he's in. You get it? we need to make decisions whether they're right or wrong. You, you, and you, you're leaving. You, you, and you, you're going. You know, in the future, we might say, Why do we buy him? Why did we sell him? Why do we keep him and let him go? But we need to make decisions because. We're holding too much hands, you know. If you try to help everybody, you help nobody. It seems like we're sorting out everybody's life jacket. Obviously, we're forgetting about our role, man. For me, it's another drama, you know. Week, year in, year out, we're talking about the same things, you know. I don't want to keep talking about central midfield at Arsenal. I don't want to keep talking about fullback, right back specifically. I don't want to keep seeing my team sign centre halves, and every year we're talking about centre halves, people. So we have to make a decision, people. So. We all know he's played for Borussia Mucci and Gladbach. You know, he's made his name primarily in Germany. He got a £35 million move in 2016. Um, and he's being linked with a move away. And ironically, they've currently got Gwendozi on loan. They might say, you know what, we'll send back Gwendozi, we'll buy Xhaka. Maybe it's a loan with an option to buy for Xhaka of £20 million. Maybe they buy him outright. Who knows? Depending on who you are, I'm sure you're happy to hear that news. But... On that note, again, it hasn't gone on to say anything of significance. We know he's he's comfortable there. I've said the relevant parts, but yeah, man. On that note, people, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I don't agree with Xhaka being named the most important player, whatever metric, with all due respect to the guy. But for now, people, I'm going to get out of here. Make sure you hit the like button, you subscribe and the rest of it. God bless you all. Please make sure you hit the like button and you've subscribed and you offer your own comments in the comment section. Um, also as well, you know, short and brief, you know, RIP Claude as well. Condolences to his family. On that note, I'm out.